Right now, let's go to our next guest, our Browns beat reporter, Mary Kay Cabot. Mary Kay, thanks so much for joining me. What's going on? Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, just uh, We're just in the little bit of a lull before <laughs> camp gets rolling on uh, July 30th, so it's kind of a quiet time. The guys are all out. Uh, scattered across the country, working out, doing their own thing, and getting ready for camp to start soon. You mentioned that camp is starting in two weeks from today. Give me the storyline or the position battle that you're going to be most intrigued with, Mary Kay, the one that goes beyond the quarterback spot. Um, hmm, let's see. That's a really good question. Well, I think um, one of the position battles to look at will be cornerback where Justin Gilbert is trying to make a comeback mm -hmm. uh, from what some teammates described as a wasted year. Can he do it? He's a number eight overall pick uh, from last year, and I think that's just huge to see what he's going to be able to do and accomplish this season. That's one area. Then I think you have to look at running back. What can Duke Johnson bring? Can he step up and be that featured guy? Is uh, our Isaiah Crowell and Terrence West going to hold him off? Uh, so that's, that's another place to look. And then there are, there are a number of, of minor battles to look at. Will Cam Irving uh, be able to unseat John Greco there uh, at the right guard spot? And, uh, you know, these are just some of the things that, that I'll be watching for. Mary Kay, you bring up the defense, and that's been a big topic of conversation this offseason when it comes to the Browns. They have used a lot of different uh, resources to improve that side of the ball, whether it be free agency, first-round picks, second-round picks. Do you feel like this is the year that the defense takes that step, becomes an elite defense, and if so, why? Yeah, you know, I really do think they can. They have to stay healthy to be able to do it, but uh, the missing pieces last year were really uh, along the defensive line and the ability to stop the run. They finished 32nd overall against the run. And again, like you said, they put their resources there. Danny Shelton, Xavier Cooper, Randy Starks, uh, those kind of guys. So... Uh, they should be able to stop the run. And then, of course, the secondary guys are going to be working hard on their tackling and trying to, to pitch in in that regard as well. So I, I do think now they will be able to put it together. They also have to be able to, to get to the quarterback and rush the passer, and I think you'll see more of that this year from uh, a number of different guys. Um, can Nate Orchard come through? He had 18 and a half sacks last year, uh, can he, but only three the year before. Uh, you know, which one is he? Is he the, the guy that can, can get going and, and wrap up the, the quarterback? Uh, you know, you've got Armani Bryant coming back. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that they have everything it takes to be a dominant de defense, and I really do think that they will be one this year. Another guy that I'm looking at, Mary Kay, Barkevius Mingo. I mean, we're talking about a former top 10 pick here. Again, you mentioned Nate Orchard, somebody drafted to be that kind of guy. Armani Bryant drafted to be that kind of guy. Would you consider this season, this one upcoming for Barkevius, to be a make-or-break year? You know, in, in some ways, yes, but it all depends on how they view him and what they're trying to get out of him. Have they determined that he is a coverage linebacker and they're going to get that role out of him and he's going to do it well? Uh, or uh, are they going to try to see if he can... Uh, become the edge rusher that he was drafted to be by the previous regime. Now, this year he will be operating with two shoulders instead of one. So, uh, you know, once he uses the speed to get there, you know, can he wrap up now that he actually has uh, two good working arms? So, I, uh, you know, I, it all depends on how you look at him. Uh, if you're looking at him as a pass rusher and he can't get the job done, uh, then I think that you would have to classify him as, you know, somewhat of a bust. Uh, if, if you have realized that, you know what, we can get a lot out of him in other ways, uh, then, you know, he's probably not what you would have hoped for uh, as your number six pick. But, um, you know, he can be useful in many ways. So I'm very interested to see, you know, what their view of him is this year. And they kind of, you know, threw the challenge out to him. Uh, Jim O'Neill threw the challenge out in minicamp where he basically said, you know what, uh, there are a lot of guys competing for that edge rush position and uh you know we'll, we'll see what he's got maybe not the best player on defense mary Kay, but give me the guy that you think is the most important for the browns defense the most important for the browns defense i would have to say still right now i think it's joe hayden mm. uh you know I, I think you just have to have that shut down corner uh that guy that you can put on uh, the number one receiver 
against the opposing team, and he can lock down that side of the field, and you know that you're good to go. Uh, so, And he opens things up for other people as well. I mean, it gives other guys the opportunity uh, to get interceptions because they're getting the ball thrown their way. So uh, I would have to say that, that I'd put Joe right up there. Mary Kay, I cannot get through this interview without asking you about Johnny Menzel in the quarterback position when it comes to Josh McCown and Johnny. Um, if the Browns had their choice at quarterback, like if they could pick the winner of the quarterback competition, who do you think they would take? Do you think they'd want it to be McCown, or do you think they'd want it to be Menzel? Well, you know what? The way that, that you're – of course, I would think – that they would want their no, their former number one overall pick, uh, I mean, not overall, their former number one pick mm. uh, to be their starting quarterback. In a perfect world, that is what you would want. But the reality of the situation is he's not ready. They know it. He knows it. And probably everybody else you know, that practices with him or watches him knows it. He's not there yet. He started two years in college, uh, and he's still very, very young. Uh, and very inexperienced. He's learning the pro game from the ground up, and he's not ready yet. So in a perfect world, he would be ready, and they would be heading into this season ready to see what Johnny Manziel can do. Instead, uh, you know, he's not there yet, and Josh McCown will likely start the season unless Johnny shocks everyone. Mary Kay, thanks so much for joining me today on Sports Insider. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Thank you.